the lesson 10. This one's about learning to turn for furniture. We start off in our very first class with our beginning students turning a little project like this bud vase. And you know, although it's a simple project, we want them to turn it to the plan that's in the book. What helps? Drawings, measurements, also templates. Well, that template's nice for transferring measurements, but a more useful template is one that fits the curve so that you can check that you're getting your angles and curvature right. So, even in the most simple things, it's good to start off with a drawing, and with a drawing, you could accomplish things like this. Well, I'm not going to make this today. The plans for this is in the back of the book, and I'll show you uh, some opportunities to on that one in a minute, but I want to show you how we approach turning for furniture. It has to start with a drawing and a plan. Let's step over here, and I'm going to show you a small Windsor chair project that we did a few years ago and how we got to the legs and the stretchers. I've stepped over a little bit and I want to talk to you about this Windsor chair project. A Windsor chair typically looks like this. There's some carving, there's some bending, but there are four legs, two stretchers, and a medial stretcher, all that have to be turned. And it would be really nice if they all look like each other. So what we do, we were very fortunate here at the school to have in our wood working department a master craftsman who is also very good with SketchUp, Tim Killen. You might check out Killen Wood site to see many of his work. Here is the plan for our miniature child's version Windsor chair. And in that plan, there are detailed drawings for each of the components, the legs and the stretchers. He made up the drawings. look like this and from that I went down to the local photocopy store and made a full scale drawing. These templates are actual size so now you may not have the capability of doing things like I have with uh, Tim in our area but you can take a piece of graph paper make a full scale drawing of what you want because the next thing we do from here cut them out and I taped them or I glued them to a piece of plastic. Full scale, I have notches here to mark the transition points. It is to scale. The dimensions at each of the key points is marked and so I can transfer them to this piece of wood. So there's a back leg, a front leg, oh, I had that backwards. Here's the back leg and front leg. These are the two stretchers. I can tell because I marked them properly. That's something else you need to do, turn the right piece in the right place. So what we're gonna to do today, we are going to turn one of these legs. And I'm gonna have already taken a block of wood, put it on the lathe, and turned it to the largest possible diameter of the project. So you don't need to see me roughing out a piece of wood. But we're gonna take this drawing, and we're gonna transfer the dimensions, and we're gonna make the pattern. If your first project in furniture, you're going to have to make some decorative legs, consider what we call the bamboo pattern. It's one of the simplest ones to produce. Simply some curves and some V-notches and tenons on, on the ends to fit where the pieces have to go. Let me show you the tools I'm going to use. I've moved the tools over here to take a look at what we need. First of all, this is spindle work. So we're going to take and rough it out into a round diameter. And I've established the diameter to be the maximum for the particular leg we're going to make. I do that, a set of calipers, set to the right dimension, 1 and 3 16 in this case. When you buy calipers, be sure that you take them to your grinder or with a file and round these points off. If we put this over a piece of spinning wood and those points are sharp, it can very easily grab and catch. So I need calipers to set dimensions and a ruler for almost every stage of a furniture project. This particular leg has two V grooves in it. So one of the tools I'm going to need for that is my skew chisel to cut those grooves. For this coving action, there's a lot of options here. One way is to just stay with your spindle roughing gouge 
and do that curve. You can do that easily. The other way is with a shallow fluted gouge. The one I've chosen to bring and use today is fairly broad across the tip and it makes long cuts like this much more easily than a narrow one that one might be slightly pointed. I have to turn these tenons. This is a stretcher. And so to get that square, I'm going to use a parting tool. In this case, I picked a fairly wide parting tool. It's wide enough that my calipers will fit down into a slot it might create for checking dimensions. It's also wide enough that I can come along a distance like this and get that nice and parallel. So what I'm going to do is take my plan. I'm going to do the front leg. My diameters here, 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 and here are all pre-established. I turned the piece round on the lathe to the largest single diameter, which is one and three sixteenths. So right now I have a spindle like this. So let's step over to the lathe, transfer some dimensions, and begin to create this leg. We're at the lathe. I've turned this piece of wood down to the maximum diameter of the project, which is this dimension right here. So what I now need to do is to transfer this design onto this piece of wood. And as I showed you the template before, this is the template for the front leg, which is what I'm going to be turning. And I've cut the piece to the right length. I want to mark these transition points, these biggest locations, and these narrowest diameters. So I'm going to turn the lathe on, fairly slow, bring my template up here, and I've cut notches. There's one, two, three. I want to mark this largest, or the smallest diameter right here. I might as well mark it too, and this smallest diameter here. So I've transferred that. Now I need to say, what is this dimension here going to be? It needs to be 13 sixteenths of an inch. So, I take my calipers and a ruler and set it to 13 sixteenths. Feels like a five-handed job sometimes, but there is thirteen sixteenths. So, first dimension I'm going to do is to establish this dimension right here as being thirteen sixteenths, and I'm going to do that with the parting tool and the calipers. RPM ought to be around maybe 1600. And I'm going to hold the calipers in my left hand. I'm going to hold the parting tool in my right hand. Thirteen sixteenths right here. If you rest the calipers lightly against the wood, don't press, but lightly, they'll slide over when you get to the dimension. So that's 13 sixteenths. We know that dimension. We know at this point right here, which is going to be one of the design points, that's 15 sixteenths. And so I'll reset. Ah. Learn to hold them properly to 15 sixteenths. Fifteen sixteenths. Here we are. And fifteen sixteenths is at this point. You notice how I'm holding my parting tool. I've got it braced against my wrist. I've got my finger along the shaft to give this some stability because I need to work one-handed rather than like this. So I'm going to be doing a lot of parting cuts holding the tool in this manner. Fifteen sixteenths. Calipers are over the back, parting tools in the front. Fifteen 
15 16 and five eighths right here and we'll go on and set all these dimensions so I'll be back to you as soon as they get all of these transferred into place and then we'll see how we connect the dots okay I finished transferring all my marks one thing you need to know is since this is a small diameter on this end I've used a spur drive that is smaller in diameter than where I need to go if I use a larger drive or a four point I could run my tool into it I know that this is 5 8 and this is 3 quarters so that the 5 8 diameter gives me enough clearance that I was able to finish that. I've also used a live center on this end that gives me clearance uh, so I can finish that. So now here, here, and here I'm going to put this detail in that makes this the bamboo pattern. But to, I can do this one but this one's down in this hole and I've got to get wood away first. So I'm going to turn a cove from here to here. It's going to end up at this diameter. <clears throat> the center of it, which is the thinnest part, is going to be the diameter I've established there. It's going to finish up at this point. Same thing here. I can turn this one because it's at this distance. It's going to be a cove down to this here, and this is the smallest diameter right here. So I've established that. This is just a sweeping cut. So we do the sweep, do the sweep, and the tool I think I'm going to start to use is going to be my spindle roughing gouge. This is a cove cut, big long cove. Same thing here, it's a big long cove. So let me do this one first. I'm approaching the lowest spot from the higher spots. Always the spindle work, work from the largest towards the smallest diameter. Large to small, large to small. So this is just a series of codes. I could easily have chosen to use my shallow fluted gouge. I want a rounded cove, so if I'm going to use the gouge, I'm pivoting around my thumb and I'm moving my body this direction creates this long cove. So I'm going to start here. And work there. Move close. And now I'm going to make that nice sweep. That's that side. Now I have to do the other side. To make that same kind of cut, I'm going to switch hands. My pivoting now is the opposite direction. Since this is the thinnest portion right here, I need to blend these two together. Now my eye is over the back. I'm looking at this curve, trying to make sure it's nice and smooth. Sandpaper later can fix a lot of the little problems. Right now, I just want to get it close. Looks pretty good as a start. 
So now I'm going to do the bamboo detail. And to do that, I'm going to use my skew chisel. Now what the bamboo detail is, is no more than a V cut. Right at this point, approach from either side. Now I could have measured that, but I'm going to do it by eye. So the V cut first, that's where it's going to be. Come in a little bit to the right. Come in a little bit from the left. And there is the bamboo detail. Now it's flat right here, and that needs to curve down, so I've got to go back and touch it up just a little bit here. So this is continuous curve down here. Now I needed to get in here, because I haven't reduced this wood here. The nice thing about the spindle roughing gouge is because being ground square across, as we talked about in lesson one, I can now stand it up on edge and come right up to the shoulder and clean that up where if I try to use the center, I'm going to run into this wall. So I've got this portion from here to here pretty well done. Now this needs to be turned down from here to here, just like I just did the last one, from this dimension and this dimension sloping down to that. So I have a lot of wood to lose. Again, I'm afraid of running into this corner, so I'm going to roll my tool up on the edge. So I can easily get into here. I'm going to continue to do that until I get down to this dimension and here and then I'm going to put another of these bamboo details here and continue on. So right now I'm seeing a little bit of tear out on the wood. It's a soft wood I'm using here for the demonstration and my tools I know are sharp so the one way to, to improve that surface quality is to increase the speed of the lathe. What was happening I was getting some vibration from this thin piece of wood. Sometimes on spindle work we need to put a support in it for longer legs to keep it from vibrating. Uh, right now I think my solution is to change something that's leading to the harmonic. One would be resharpening a tool. Another one would be to change the pressure with which we're pushing. A third thing is to change something about the lathe. Speed it up or slow it down. But get away from that harmonic spot that's caused this vibration right here. I'm going to speed it up and do that. And I'm going to go back to the spindle, ga the shallow fluted gouge, almost said it, because it's a smaller area of cut and that might also help improve the surface quality. And I can tell right now that it has. thing on this side. Now one thing about this bamboo pattern is I know that there's a detail here and here and I'm simply sloping down to the center from both sides. So a lot of this is done by eye. We could, like doing a baseball bat, establish dimensions every half an inch down here and put a lot of parting cuts in here and just connect even more dots. It could be easily done by just simply measuring at different points along the drawing. Uh, on this particular pattern, I found it's not necessary. I can do this by eye. And I need to do four legs alike, so I've got to be cautious to get the curvature from one to the next as close as possible. So I'm going to continue to do that and here and here, and we'll be back when we get all these points connected.
Okay, we've got that turned down. Got to put another uh, detail in here. First thing I am going to do though is do a little sanding to clean up the surface. Tool rest out. I'm using uh, 180 grit and I'm using cloth flexible sandpaper. It's great for furniture work because I can do motions like this. And if there's little errors in my turning, depending on the grid I'm using, I can fix it. So right now, from here to here, the curve looks really good. And it's because I sanded part of it in. The curve from here to here looks pretty good. This is rough, but this is going to go away. I'm going to make that into another detail. One thing about putting on detail with the skew chisel, I suggest that you do not sand afterwards because the skew chisel is going to give us a very nice looking cut. It's laying right here in front of me. And the cut surface is going to be such that it's nice and crisp. And if I sand it, I'm going to round it off and it's not going to be near as crisp. So let's, uh, I don't like the height. I'm going to take it down just a smidge. And I'm going to put a detail here that looks like this one. Right in the center. V notch. A little relief from the right. A little relief from the left. I'm using the long point of the tool down. And I wanted that just a little more radius, so I made another cut there. Now, I can't improve that with sanding. I gotta leave that alone. So from here to here to here, we're okay. Now down at this point here, we have to do another detail just like that and then turn this on down to 5 eighths. This is going to be the foot and so that just comes down to 5 eighths. And then we'll turn this down to a slow taper to 3 quarters. Dimensions already established. So again, I have to take this from here to here. I want to do this first and do this last. I want to keep the most amount of support I can at the headstock end as long as possible. So I tend to try, when possible, to work from the tailstock toward the headstock on most of these projects. That goes from less support to more support. That's a good way to do it. So I'm now going to do the same thing here, and we can do some of that off camera. this with the skew chisel this time just for a variety. No reason I can't. We learned how to do a planing cut. That's what this is. It's a planing cut. So, other than the very top, we finished this leg. So I'll complete that and then we can take it off of the lathe and take a look at it. It's 
slow taper. That's all we need is a taper here. Here we have one Windsor chair leg, right to the plan, and done that quickly. Now I want to take you back and show you something else that you might consider if you can do this and start making matching pieces. Then you might want to try something that has more complexity to it, such as the candlesticks that are in the back of the book that's referenced in the, these lessons. Let me show you what makes that an interesting project. I'm going to bring them right up here to the lathe in a minute. Be right back. I'm back at a clean lathe, and I've got the textbook that, from which all these lessons have been taken. And I want to point you out to this section in the back, which is the appendix. There are a number of advanced projects there. One of them, and the first one, is doing a shape sort of like this. It's beads, it's coves, there's billets, there's fillets, there's all sorts of different shapes. And the thing to get this right requires a drawing. So here's the challenge for you. Go to the appendix, and there's the project. Here's all the dimensions. Make yourself a template and attempt to turn one. I think it's a great project to do. If you can, there's an opportunity to do one that's 10% bigger and one that's 10% smaller. And going to the photocopy machine and reducing the plan by 10 or increasing it by 10 won't do it. So the challenge then will be what portions of the dimensions do I adjust to keep the look the same and yet create different heights. It's a good challenge. It's going to require you using your roughing gouge, your skew chisel, definitely your shallow fluted gouge, and to establish the dimensions your parting tool and calipers. So furniture, what makes it complicated is the point that you have to do several pieces that are similar and that takes the practice and it starts off with having an accurate drawing and a template. So I hope that you have a chance to try some of these exercises and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.